Listen in and join the fun. Learning as we go, new words and stories. Adventures begun. Let's open up the pages. Don't have far to look. It's all in a book. Rupees. Reading room. Rupees. Well, hello, little readers. Welcome to Ruthie's Reading Room. I'm Ruthie, and this is my buddy, Ja. He's my favorite stuffy, and he's joining us for story time today. I know, he's small but mighty, and I love him. <laughs> and how are you enjoying that song? Ruthie's Reading Room. I hope you enjoy it as much as I do. Anyways, I'm getting away from what we're here to do. Story time. Okay. So run and go get your stuffy or blankie and a reading buddy and meet us back right here. See you soon. All right, all my little readers are coming on back with friends, family, and stuffies. I love it. And let's all settle in. And three, two, one, let's ask the question. Which book is coming off the shelf next? I'm excited to see too. Let's go. Ta-da! What do we see, Ja? Yvette likes school. Oh, did we read together? Let's do it again. Yvette likes school. This book was written by Dale A. Joyner. Now I'd like you to go back in your memory, little readers. Do you remember that author's name? I love when authors come back and want me to share another one of their books. Yeah, Noah and Big Paws. You can see it right here. That was written by the same author, so I know you're gonna love this book as well. But how can we really be sure? We've got to read the book. Okay, okay, let's get to it. So let's get ready. I'm gonna put Ja in his reading spot and not let him fall. And let's put our listening ears on and put our hands in our lap and let's make sure you're ready to listen, okay? I'm just going to use this little magnifying glass. <laughs> all right. Looking out over all of you. You guys are quiet. Oh, yeah. I see you on the carpet. Excellent. Okay. We're ready to go. So let's dive in. Part one, Yvette. My name is Yvette. I am in the third grade talented and gifted class at my school. Awesome start. Great job being a smarty pants, awesome. I was placed in the talented and gifted class in second grade. We took a test and I made a very high score. Most of my best friends are in other classes. We all do things differently, but we have fun together. And that's great, even though we have different abilities, we can all still be friends. What I like to do with my friends is to read good books. Awesome, I love it, you're in. <laughs> Then we discuss it. Even better, make sure you understand what was read, what the message is in the book. I like to play teacher so we can do experiments or make something fun. My parents only allow us to play video games or use a computer for only 15 minutes a day, unless it is for research or for schoolwork. <laughs> how, are, how are the little readers feeling? Do you want your parent or caregiver to step away now? <laughs> 15 minutes of screen time. Any takers, parents? <laughs> One time during a sleepover, my friend and I read a book called The Man Who Walked Between the Towers by Mordecai Gerstein. Then we made two buildings out of Jenga blocks and two bricks. We connected a cable like Philippe Petit did. We pretended that my brother's Woody from Toy Story was Philippe and we put him on the cable. Actually, the cable we used was a yardstick and we used other toys and items to create scenes like in the book. We had lots of fun pretending that night. Wow, that's a great idea. Have you guys ever read a story and then did a craft or an activity like that based on what you learned in the book? That's a great idea. Always thinking. Let me introduce my family. 
My mother is a dance instructor and she has her own dance studio. She majored in chemistry in college. My dad majored in physics in college and he is an engineer in the Navy. They want all of us to go to college so we can follow our dreams in life, just like they did. I have an older sister. She is eight years older than I am. That makes her 16 years old and in the 12th grade, but she will be 17 years old by the time she graduates from high school in June. Next, I have a baby brother. He is three years old. At first, I didn't like having a baby in the family, but then because he was a boy, I didn't mind being a big sister. I can teach him things like how to read. Again, a vet, high five. Pass on that knowledge to your little brother. Part two, Yvette and No Child Left Behind. I remember in the movie Home Alone, a young boy was left behind when his parents went on vacation. What would you do if you were left behind, little readers? Would you know what to do? Who to call? Do you have an auntie or a neighbor that you can trust? Yeah, it's important to have an emergency plan and even better if you're not left behind. <laughs> One time, Stephanie was left behind in a race during PE. She couldn't keep up with the rest of us, so she was in last place. My cousin Frankie was left behind in second grade. He missed a whole lot of days from school. Last year, a girl named Jackie missed her high school graduation. She was left behind because she was in the hospital having emergency surgery. They had to take out her appendix. Owie. One time, my mom forgot to pick me up from school. Uh-oh, whoops. I was left behind, but my older sister reminded her to go get me. <laughs> well, well, we're all thankful for big sisters then. <laughs> Poor Yvette. Last Friday, Jason was left behind at school. He didn't come out of the building with the rest of us, so he had to go to the principal's office to call his mother. Wow. The parents aren't doing very well in this book <laughs> for getting their kids. <laughs> Every two or three months, we have a fire drill at school. One thing for sure, I would hate to get left behind during a real fire. It seems like getting left behind isn't a good thing. I can see why adults say, no child left behind. I agree. <laughs> Tomorrow, I will ask my teacher just what does no child left behind really mean because a child is always getting left behind? Good question. Part three, my new words by Yvette. I have a diverse group of friends and they help me to learn new words. My teacher told me to use them in sentences. So I wrote about my friends. Billy has one foot. He lost his other foot two years ago in a gory car accident. Gory. Mary was born without arms, but she can tell hilarious jokes. I like listening to her jokes when we wait at the bus stop. Hilarious. Tammy wears really thick eyeglasses, but she loves to read. She can even read Braille. Braille. She and his parents were scientists living in the Arctic. She and her brother were born in an igloo. She loves living in a warmer environment. Igloo? environment. Jalen was born with cerebral palsy. That's why he moves around in a special wheelchair, which he controls by pushing buttons. Cerebral palsy. Because my friend Melanie lived in France most of her life, she can speak fluent French. She teaches me how to say our new words in French. Fluent. Ricky is five feet eight inches tall. He is gigantic compared to the rest of us, and he is still growing. Gigantic. Stella is in the third grade. She is in my talented and gifted class at school. Her family is atypical. She has two moms who love her very much. Atypical. Let's review my new words. Gory, hilarious, braille, igloo, environment, cerebral palsy, fluent, gigantic, atypical. I love to go to school 
because I love to learn new things. The end. That was a great little book. We met Yvette and her family and how much she loves school and learning. And I think we picked up a few ideas of how we can put into practice the things that we learn while reading books. And when we learn a new word, we can put it in a sentence so that the idea really sticks in our mind. High five. That's a great idea. And how about we make that after reading homework? So when you come across a new word, you can start using it in a sentence. And a good idea to add to that is you write it down and you practice how to spell it. You make sure you really understand the meaning. And I would get your caregiver or parent to help you with that. All right. High five. All right. So check in the description below. You'll find a link to where you can purchase this book. And remember, the best place to read is wherever you are with a book. All right. Awesome, my little readers. So I'm so happy you joined Jaw and I in Ruthie's reading room. And if you enjoyed reading with us, remember to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell. We look forward to reading with you again next time. And with the holiday season upon us, I have some special gems for you coming up. So don't miss out. Happy reading, little readers. Goodbye. Ruthie's read it. Thank you.